Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 and another part of this Ajax series as we get into our second season. Now last time when we left off we had been beaten 4-2 by Juventus, a very interesting game. Cristiano Ronaldo getting a goal there um, but we weren't able to get past them. It's left us in a tricky position uh, going into the next few games. First up against Borussia Dortmund at home. Uh, we then have Krosnodor away and then at home so that if we win all three games gives us nine points we just need one from the last two uh, which becomes very doable uh, but if we lose to Borussia Dortmund here it really is a massive uphill struggle to get out of that Champions League group so today we are going to take on Borussia Dortmund we'll also take on uh, FC Utrecht um, and then maybe crossing the door depending on how we do against Borussia Dortmund I'll skip the Volendam game because they're down at 12th in the league uh, and the league is not going to pose too much of a challenge this season you can see we're currently one point ahead of Utrecht uh, which is why we'll show that game uh, and then AZ and Feyenoord a couple of points behind very tight you know, three points separating the top six after eight games uh, shows that it is going to be a tough struggle. But since last time, uh, we played Ardo Den Haag. It was a Dusan Tadic penalty that won it for us, uh, which is a little bit fortunate. I mean, we totally annihilated Den Haag. 46 shots, 23 on target. They didn't even have a shot on target the whole game. Uh, but if Tadic hadn't scored that penalty, it would have been one of those really frustrating uh, draws. Tadic obviously in sensational form at the moment. Uh, and keeps banging in penalty after penalty, uh, which he did again here against Heracles. Uh, a good 5-0 win, also good. Uh, it's one of the goals that were scored here. So Tadic with that penalty to start off. Then Barrow out wide, cleared away. Blint picked it up. He had Edouard in the middle, who he found and finished. So Edouard finally getting goals from open play. Uh, ball comes out wide here to Leon Bailey. This goal is sensational. Skips a player, cuts inside. And then what a finish into the far post. That's what £50 million gets you in the area de Vise. Uh, Justin Cliver, ball over the top for Edouard, brought it down, uh, put it across, and Cliver gets his first goal since his return uh, to Ajax. And then late on, Edouard with another goal. Good head out from a Bailey free kick, and it's 5 0. So a very good performance there. Good to see some of the new signings getting on the score sheet, getting the assists. And really just helping us along and at the moment the team uh, looking very good if we sort them by goals here you can see Tadic 12 goals in 10 games at 31 years old he is still playing exceptional football uh, and Leon Bailey Justin Cliver doing well as well having come in now um, starting to get some of those good results out uh, so into this game now against Borussia Dortmund, a very tough match. We really, really need to win it. Uh, the team going out there is the one that won 5-0 last time. So we've got Tadic and Edouard, Cliver, Bailey, Zaracha and Barrow uh, in that front pocket of six. And then Blint, Diaz, Alvarez and Masrawi in defence with Onana in goal. We did beat Borussia Dortmund in a winter friendly last year. Uh, but they are a really tough team. They've got Sancho, Haaland, Royce there in their front three. Midfield's reasonably sort of strong. Uh, and then in defence as well, Hummels and Tarr with Hakimi and Schultz and Strahakovska in goal. It's a very, very, very tough match this one. But if we play well, we are Champions League semi-finalists for the last two seasons. Uh, we've got very good players. We've spent a lot of money. If we play well, we can win this game. Uh, we are at home as well, that home advantage, very important. Uh, a draw, not the end of the world, but it leaves us with so much work to do uh, going in. This really is a bit of a must-win game. Now Hakimi puts the ball across, and Royce nearly scored Onana with a good stop there on the line. But already we're under a bit of pressure as Bailey counter-attacks. He's still going, Bailey. He's got to the edge of the area, he cuts across, and he can't get the finish uh, just sort of stood still with the ball in front of him. You're always going to struggle to get power on it there with your weaker left foot. Um, but good that we managed to sort of respond straight away from that Dortmund attack where they nearly scored. We went down the other end and nearly got one. And at the moment, we seem to be on top on the shots count, not so much in the possession, but that's what we would normally expect. Here is Bailey again on the attack down the left, and Emre Chan has chopped him. And there's an hour to go as Emre Chan gets a red card, and that is a huge... Huge lifeline for the team. Going to demand a little bit more from them, see if we can squeeze that extra bit out of them uh, and start to really go down the other end to get some chances. Here's Masrawi with the throw in, goes in. Bailey's missed it, but Strakowska, or Stra Strakosha, I can't do that name. I am terrible at some of these pronunciations. 
Now Witzel forward to Haaland, back to Witzel. Mario Goetze. Witzel again. Little neat passages of play here. Witzel with the ball, back to Goetze. Out wide to Schultz. They're being forced back though, which is encouraging. Obviously with 10 men they're going to struggle uh, to break us down, but there will be slightly more room. And Bailey has won the ball. He does that so often from the left back. Cuts inside, but it's an easy save by the keeper, as he will be referred to from now on. Uh, Blint with a long throw. We're coming in on half time. Clivert's in there. Ball's cleared away. Sancho with it. Cut out by Barrow. Very good interception. He's got a man out wide. Bailey down to Masrawi. Four in the box. Another arriving. It's cleared away. Royce has it. Royce forced back to the goal line and then hoofs it clear. They've put it forward though, and Haaland can be dangerous in these positions. Ruben Diaz should be able to deal with him and does. Now Alvarez out wide to Masrawi. Got a man out there, but Gertz are again in with a tackle. Schultz. Oh, and Edward steals it. Bailey's picked up the loose ball, and he's hit the crossbar. Very close there from Leon Bailey, but not quite able to get that one in. Uh, and it remains nil-nil at the moment. Uh, I'm going to say I'm not happy because we are playing 10 men. We really should have the lead at this point, and we don't. Uh, so some work to do, really. Um, but second half we've got all the chance in the world we just have to get this win it's not really good enough that we haven't scored here against the 10 men of Dortmund Hummels sends it back to the keeper ball out wide to the right back Hakimi now Witzel now Hakimi interestingly is a player that we did try to sign but he rejected contract for, from us in order to go to Brescia Dortmund we did low ball him I wasn't too keen necessarily on going in high with an offer as the Hood hammers that one into the back of the net Sancho with the assist and we are 1-0 down to a 10-man Brushy Dortmund while we're at home. This is really embarrassing stuff from the team. I could see us crash out the Champions League very early on. Sancho here teed it up. Barrow just left his man completely open there on the edge of the box. That's unacceptable and it is now 1-0 to Brushy Dortmund and we have an awful lot of work to do. Ball out wide, cleared back, Cliver with it. He's got players in the middle. He puts it across, Tara away, Witzel can bring it further out. Now Haaland, giving away to Zaracho. Cliver over the top, Eduard could get in here, he does, and he's tucked it under the keeper. His fifth goal of the season, and we are back on level terms. Very good finish from him. Getting the goal when we really, really needed it. He's not scored much this season, but that's a very important one. Cliver over the top. And he was just allowed to run onto it. Keeper didn't really do his job properly. Neither did the defenders. And Edouard got between them to give us our equaliser. So half an hour left to go. We just need to find another goal here. We've got a few players not playing particularly well. Um, although highlights just popped up. So I'll let this play out before we make the changes. Leon Bailey seems to not be having the best game. I thought he was one of our best players in the first half, but game disagrees. Here's Sancho causing all ends of trouble. He's back to Royce again, and we haven't learned our lesson in midfield. I'm going to bring somebody off in midfield because this is not really good enough. Um, now I'm going to move Zaracho up, and that will allow us to make the change in central midfield. If we bring Wijnaldum on, uh, and maybe leave it like that for now. Ruben Diaz bringing the ball out here. Out wide to Leon Bailey. He holds it up, sends it across to Daly Blint. Going down the left flank, puts it into Justin Cliver. He's got players in the middle. It comes out to Blint again. Edouard is there, but it's straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. Uh, we can maybe try and get creative again, see if that does any good. But we are running out of time a little bit. Might need to make a change up top if we take Tadic off, who's been really poor today, and bring Fabio Silva on for the last 15 minutes. We've got our best players out there. That's the trouble, really. There's not a lot I can do, but Cliver has the ball here. Back to Wijnaldum. Out to Daly Blint. Four in the box. Pulls it back. Wijnaldum. Oh, he's missed it. How has your genie Wijnaldum missed that one? That's so poor to have missed it from that sort of range. Need to demand a little bit more. The players are getting tired. Just a few minutes left here as the ball sent forward. Cliver has it. Now Barrow. Switches it out wide. Masuari arriving off the post and Edouard can't reach the follow-up. Uh, going to take Justin Cliver off here. He's got a yellow. We can put Jude Bellingham on for a little bit. Uh, but it's not going to make any difference at this point. That is so frustrating that we haven't won that game. We were the better team. Uh, yes, the sending off uh, was beneficial. But we really, really should be winning that game. But Krosnador have beaten Juventus 
Not only have they beaten them, they've come from 2-0 down to win it 3-2 with a 93rd minute goal. And that changes quite a bit. Uh, it's going to be very tight now going in. It means we're at the bottom of the group. But if we win our next two games against Crossendor, we move on to seven points. Uh, Dortmund and Juve playing each other twice. We're going to have to hope one comes out dominantly on top of the other in those two games to give us that chance of getting first or second. Because if they get a cup, you know, a win for each of them, we'll put Borussia Dortmund on seven, Juve on six, and us on seven with two games to go against each of them. Now that still means it's very much in our hands. That really is a spanner in the works for Juventus. Um, but it means we need to be careful when we take on Krosnodor as well. So. Uh, plenty to look forward to in the Champions League. It's not going to be a walkthrough, but it's also not the end of the world. Um, so let's play the game against Volendam and then we'll finish off with Utrecht and Krosnodor uh, in this episode. So since that last game, we have won 5-1, uh, an easy game against Volendam, although it looked quite scary to begin with when Odson Edouard committed a foul in the penalty area and it meant that they had the chance to take the lead from the spot, which they duly did, nested with the penalty in that bottom right corner. But our saviour in the Eredivisie was once again Dusan Tadic, Edouard's header on, making up for his mistake by giving Tadic a goal. He then built the second one, ball over the top, Tadic in behind, and he made it 2-1 to give us a lead just 10 minutes after going behind. Neres in, Eduardo again the creator as Ruben Diaz nodded it home. Bailey then put the ball in, Tadic uh, with the header, Ruben Diaz probably stealing his goal there. Uh, Williams then on off the bench, put the ball in and what a finish from David Neres. He just stopped the ball dead and then fired it in. Keeper maybe should have saved it but it went into that far post and means that we're now ready to take on FC Utrecht in a battle at the top of the table. We are one point clear. We will guarantee going two points clear if we win this um, depending on what AZ and Final do. Uh, we could go four points clear. So Lots of opportunity today. We have Edouard and Tadic up there. Neres is back in the side with Bailey on the right. Zoracho and Barrow in the middle with Blint, Diaz, Alvarez and Dest in defence. And Onana in goal. All very confident um, for this game because we have been very good in the league. That defeat to Feyenoord aside, um, we have been very good in the league. We haven't always broken down the floodgates at... Uh, very early in the game, it sometimes takes all the second half, but we've got a chance here, Dest puts the ball in, Tadic is there, it's everybody piling in, but the keeper does just pick the ball up, we nearly did make that very early breakthrough, but just not quite going for us, and now Utrecht with a chance, it's Barback with the ball, and it's tipped over by Onana, we need to get this win really, and keep up that excellent winning record that we've got, that would be 9 and 10 if we win today. Mayo with the ball in, but Onana makes the stop. This has been a bit of an odd season. I mean, there are so many teams performing well at the moment in the league. And obviously our Champions League campaign is looking a bit strange as well at the minute. But here's Bailey with the ball. Back to Dest, who beats his man. Back to Bailey. And Edouard is denied. Oh, that's very frustrating because he's so close to giving us the lead there. Dest can't put the ball in. We are... Really creating a lot of chances though, as Dest takes this long throw in, ball in towards Edouard, cleared out to Bailey, his shot blocked, Dest follows up, three players running to him, uh, as he looks to bring it over, it's run for Ruben Diaz, luckily, Blint to Barrow, back out to Leon Bailey, Dest making a run, but Bailey's trying to do it himself, he finds Neres, and again the keeper with a save, that keeper's playing out of his skin right now, we've got the corner, Bailey in, it's come to Edouard, and he shanked it very wide there, um, but you can see we've had five e efforts on target, so five saves from their keeper. But here's Bailey with a free kick, good angle. Ruben Diaz scores again, three and two for him with that header. And we have broken down Utrecht's defence, got it past their keeper. It took a, a clip off the underside of the bar on the way in, but a very good top corner header from Ruben Diaz. Stepping up, his high leadership paying off there uh, and making it 1-0. So can we go and get a couple more now? Blint to Neres. Back to Blint. We have just had the international break, so the player should be reasonably fit as Blint continues to come forward, puts it across, and Leon Bailey with the header gets his second goal for the club. Daily Blint with the cross and Leon Bailey with the header. A very nice goal. Uh, and 21 minutes in, we're now 2 0 up and probably looking quite comfortable against the only team to beat us 
in the league last season. We are at home. Uh, I'm pretty sure they beat us at home last season as well, which is the very frustrating thing, costing us our potentially invincible season. Um, and this season, obviously, that chance has already gone uh, due to final beating us, but they are now losing 2-0 to PSV. So as it stands, we will open up a three-point lead at the top of the table, which is quite nice. Uh, an even bigger gap over some of the teams. Bailey gets through, he's won the ball, he does it so often, can't quite keep it in there. Uh, but we'll be four points clear of Utrecht and AZ, with final dropping quite far back now, five points behind us. Uh, so PSV, the nearest challengers, as ball goes in. Tadic is there, he's denied by the keeper, uh, who is really keeping Utrecht in with a slim chance with all these saves. As we put the corner in again, the ball ricochets around like a pinball machine. Back out to Bailey, he's taken out in the box, but it's a fair tackle. 13 efforts, 10 on target. There's no question their keeper's the best player on the pitch for them at the moment. He's got a 7.4 rating, even though they're 2-0 down. Onana with the ball out, comes to Neres. He's clean through on the keeper again, and this time there's nothing the keeper can do. It's 3-0, David Neres with the goal. He's having a very good season, six goals for him now. That's more than Edouard has, I think. Onana with the long ball out. Excellent first touch to control it. Gets round the defender uh, and then tucks it into that far post before the keeper can do anything uh, to prevent it. So a nice 3-0 lead now going in towards half-time. Their keeper still with a very high positive rating. Ball goes out, given straight away to Leon Bailey. He's got three in the box. He's trying to do it himself. He holds it up, pulls it back. Dest is saved and Tadic is there. 15 goals for him now this season. I'm pretty sure almost all of them have come in the league and we're only on week 10 of the league. Um, Bailey here with the run, pulled it back, just kept it in. Des there had his effort denied. Neres was tackled and Tadic finished it 4-0. The pressure really just absolutely paying for Utrecht. Although that is one of the worst tackles I've ever seen. Leon Bailey... Just absolute moment of madness has flung himself in two-footed. Uh, I think I'm going to go for a nice 4-3-2 after that. Uh, we can probably just bring our Jude Bellingham, to be honest. I don't think we need to use Wijnaldum for this one, given we're 4-0 up going in at half-time. Jude Bellingham can get a good bit of game time in a winning team. Uh, in what is a potentially tricky second half, I can't see us losing four or five goals in the second half, though I think it's going to be relatively comfortable. Ball cleared out. Back in. Edouard down to Barrow. Out wide. Dest puts it in. It's cleared away. But Barrow on the volley. And it's gone onto the roof of the net there. Not quite able to get his effort into the back of the net. But only one change made so far. We've got a couple more we can bring on. I'm just going to let it run for a little bit. If we concede, I'll bring on first team players. If uh, we maintain this lead for a while, I will just bring on a few wonder kids. Give them a little bit of game time out there. Blint here with the throw. In towards Edouard. It's cleared back to Barrow. Down to Bellingham. Now Barrow. Forced out of the box. He should be able to switch that one in. He does. To Daily Blint. He puts it in. Tadic at the near post. Isn't going to be able to get a shot off. And it has just gone out for a quick corner. So I'll make a little change while we wait here. Uh, see if we've got on. We can bring Gravenberch on for Barrow. I might also just bring Fabio Silva on for Edouard. Uh, now there's something going on here. I guess there must have been a foul uh, from the corner or potentially before the corner. It looks like it might have happened from the corner. No foul. So it's a goal kick. No penalty either. Um, so I'm not sure what happened there. It's a risk of going into the subs when it's a highlight. But Jude Bellingham... Gets his first goal of the season. Dusan Tadic had the effort. Came out to Bellingham and he finishes it 4-5-0. So a very good idea to bring him on instead of Wijnaldum. Just came right off the keeper's chest there to the path of Bellingham who finished it for number 5. And this has been pretty embarrassing for SC Utrecht who were second in the league before this game. And despite us going down to 10 men, they are going to lose without scoring a goal. 5 conceded. And with their keeper being the best player on the pitch for them, uh, it's pretty damning. And there you go, a nice 5-0 win. Five different goal scorers as well. Uh, so we can be very happy with that. I'm not too worried about Bailey getting the red card. It means he'll miss the next probably couple of games. 
uh, but it does mean that he'll be fresher for these Champions League matches, including here against Krosnodor, because he only played 40 minutes in the end. Uh, so let's jump into this Krosnodor game and see if we can get a nice win. So the Russian side, Krosnodor today, uh, nobody really in their team that I have any worries about. Bill Vilhena, who obviously used to play in the Eredivisie, is in their side. But otherwise, this should be quite a comfortable win, even though we are away from home. Now, obviously, Juventus did lose in this stadium in the last Champions League round. So it's not a guaranteed win, but um, I would think we will get the three points. I'd be stunned if we didn't. Uh, and it would also probably mean that our Champions League campaign is over. Now, Borussia Dortmund actually have the lead over Juventus, uh, which is going to set up a really interesting finish to this group. If Juventus don't make it out, that is a uh, massive, massive blow for them. Zoracho here puts the ball in. It's cleared away. Uh, Shoma Rudolph. Good tackle by Ruben Diaz. Now Zoracho. He's got players around him. He could play Tadic in. He's gone himself and he's put it wide of the base of that post. Currently we are sitting at the bottom of the group as it stands. Long throw in though. Comes to Edouard. Cleared out by the centre back. A little bit of an opportunity there. Not taken. Going to demand a little bit more from the team. 2-0 now to Brescia Dortmund against Juventus. Long throw. Cleared out by Edouard. Bailey's effort is blocked. Very wayward effort. Petrov over the top. Oh, and we've not got there. And Onana's bailed out. And we are 1-0 down. Um, I mean, that was horrific on every level. Everybody involved in that goal did a really poor job. Uh, Wanderson, just to punt over. We had three defenders ahead of the striker. They all just play the offside trap for some reason. And then Onana decides not to actually come and get the ball. Uh, and Shoma Rudolph just tucks it home into a pretty much empty net and we're 1-0 down. But Bailey here with the corner, Ruben Diaz over the top. And as it stands, we will have one point from the first three games. We're probably going to need to win all three if we don't get in, in, back into this game. But we just have Dusan Tadic with the finish. Hopefully not the same shock waiting for us here that happened to Juve. Bailey put the corner in, Alvarez tapped it on. And there was Dusan Tadic to tuck it into an empty net from close range. So back on level terms. Still got work to do though. If we're going to get this lead and get the three points. Barrow brings it forward. He's got men out to his left. He does tee up David Neres. Running quite direct at the goal. He's got through it saved. But Edouard is there on the loose ball. Tucking it into the empty net. And we have turned the game around to make it 2-1. And that will put us up in second in the group as it stands, um, obviously Juventus, if they make a good comeback or if we concede, this is all going to change around again. But a very good finish from Edouard there. Right place and an easy one into the empty net. But as it stands, we're in a good position. I'd like another one or two just to really tie up this game. We are the better side. 3-0 now to Brushy Dortmund against Juventus. I was thinking that the Brushy Dortmund team, when I actually you know, was taking a look at it um, when we played them, much, much stronger than the Juventus team, I would say. So it's not necessarily a huge surprise, that result. Um, and there is potential here. I mean, I think that's a penalty. But there is potential that we could consider going for the Juve job uh, if they get their manager sacked. So something to bear in mind. But we've got a penalty here. Dusan Tadic to take it into that bottom corner. And that is 3-1, his 17th of the season already. Um, and we are on track to take second spot in the group uh, after three games, the halfway mark in this group stage. And if we can do that um, and then win again against Krosnodor, maybe if uh, Borussia Dortmund do beat Juventus, that would open up potentially a four-point gap for us over Juve. Bailey with the ball in. It's cleared out, but only as far as Romario Barro. Back out to Leon Bailey. Takes it to the byline, finds David Neres, and there we go. 4-1, it is all over. But yeah, if we win uh, and go four points clear ahead of Juventus, then a draw against them would guarantee uh, our place in the next round and also knock them out. Neres with a very good header. Got into a great position there for an easy finish. And that's always what you want to do, get in the good position so you don't have to do that much work to actually get the goal. You just have to be in the right place at the right time. Now we can bring Jude Bellingham on. Uh, we can also maybe bring on Martinez at left back. 
We do still see him quite weak in that left back position, so it's something that we might want to look to address in the January window. Martinez with a long throw here, Tadic's effort blocked, and the ball just cleared out uh, with about 20 minutes left to play. Martinez in towards Edouard, comes out to Bellingham, Martinez again. Puts it in. Edouard on the volley has got it the wrong side of the post there. Uh, and so it's just gone wide. But you can see how dominant we've been in this game. No risk of us uh, necessarily losing like Juventus did. Despite that early scare when they did take the lead. But that was entirely our fault. It's not like they necessarily created or earned that goal. It was very preventable. Uh, except for players not quite being switched on. Now Ramirez has got him behind. He puts it across into the arms of Onana from the header there. That's their first real opportunity they've created. We nearly had another mistake at the back there with Alvarez. Barrow forward though, Cliver, tackled by Ramirez. Ball sent back. Now Fernandez to Vilhena. Once upon a time a wonder kid in the game. Fernandez back to Vilhena. Bellingham wins it, cleared away. Ball down the line comes to Shappy. Here he is again. Tackle's going in. We're just not quite getting it away and keeping control of the ball. And it's another one of those pullbacks to the edge of the area. Need to figure out if there's a way I can stop that without impacting the flow of the team through the tactic. Because that's happened a couple of times now. It wasn't happening so much last season. But it is happening now. Olsen with the ball. And it's so much space there. Keeper out of position. Basically an open goal from the edge of the area. Which is unacceptable. Um, and now we've got... About five minutes to see out with a just a two goal cushion. Barrow out wide to David Neres. He attacks down the left. Ball goes in. It's cleared away. Barrow over the top. Uh, interesting to see Juventus at the bottom of this group as well. It's one of those things where if we had managed to beat Juventus, they probably would have been knocked out of the competition at this point. But here's Vilhena out wide to Fernandez. Ball comes to Ramirez. And he's buried it. And it's now 4-3. And this Krosnodal team, not one to be underestimated. I'm not sure why we were expo so exposed at the back there from that corner. But it, it gave them the man advantage and they used it well. Ramiro's coming in. Onana maybe could have done more. Uh, for instance, dive to his left. Uh, but it means we just need to see out these last couple of minutes without giving away the three points. And there you go. We have managed to get the win. Um going to say the team weren't really good enough they seem to mostly have reacted well to that but you can see Juventus absolutely blown out the water there uh, by Brushy Dortmund so going to be really interesting one of the more interesting Champions League groups that I've been involved in for quite a while and not exactly the order you would have expected this group to be in at halfway stage but very very tight by all accounts it's even going to be tight getting that Europa League spot in third place um, so just something to keep an eye on as we go forward uh, now next time uh, we're probably going to do a little bit of a break we can assume we'll win this Krosnodal game we do have PSV though just before it but I think we need to make a bit more progress so I think what we'll do is go up to the Juventus match next so a good long break, six matches uh, to be played offline then we'll come back to the Juventus match and then we can always have a double header Juventus and then Borussia Dortmund just to see how we do in the Champions League but if you have enjoyed this episode do drop a like down below make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel but until next time see ya